What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So Motorola makes a lot of phones and in this video I'm going to compare a bunch of them and also let you know which ones you should buy and which ones you should definitely avoid. Now I'm going to be focusing specifically on the 2023 Moto G devices for the US market. So if you're wondering why like the Razer foldable or various Moto Edge devices aren't included here, that's why. Again, specifically 2023 Moto G smartphones. And there's still a lot of them, five in fact, the Moto G Play, the Moto Moto G 5G, the Moto G Power 5G, the regular Moto G Stylus, and the Moto G Stylus 5G. And I'm already tired of hearing myself say the letter G. To keep things simple, I've lined up the phones worst to best, left to right, kind of. The Moto G Play on the far left is the cheapest, least specced device with the fewest features, while the Moto G Stylus 5G on the far right is the highest end phone in this lineup. The only caveat is that I put the two Moto G styluses next to each other, even though the regular Moto G stylus is actually only barely better than the Moto G Play this year, seriously. We'll get into that in just a second. Price-wise, we have a wide range and there's something for pretty much all budgets. The cheapest of the bunch, the Moto G Play, retails for $169, but it's been out for a while and you can actually get it on Amazon for basically 110 bucks now. The Moto G 5G is the next step up at $249, though it too is currently on sale for $199. The Moto G Power is Technically a $300 phone, but you guessed it, on sale for $50 off, so $249. I'm sure you're sensing a theme here. The regular Moto G Stylus is actually a $200 phone on sale though, of course, for $169. And the Moto G Stylus 5G, the newest and most expensive one here, well, it's 25% off right now, $299. Essentially, every Moto G device is a sub $300 smartphone, which don't get me wrong, is great, but Motorola smartphones seem to always be on on sale, except for like the first couple of days when they launch, which is a bummer for me since I paid full price for every single one of these. But if you want to save some money, I'll leave links down below in the video description to the discounted prices on all these Moto G devices. When you're searching for them, just make sure you're looking specifically at the 2023 versions of these phones. It'll say that in the listing title or the description. And here in the US, most if not all of these will be discounted through the various wireless carriers as well. So what I'm saying here is that you shouldn't be paying full price for any Moto G smartphone ever. Physically, all five of these Moto G devices basically look identical, at least from the front, and they're all pretty much the same size too, with 6.5 inch screens. The only exception is the Moto G Stylus 5G. It's actually 6.6 inches, but you're not really getting a lot of variety with the design. And they all have the thicker black borders surrounding the display with more noticeable bottom chins. Some of them are slightly thinner, but at a glance, honestly, there's nothing significant that sets any of these phones apart. Around back, four of the five phones have a refreshed design for 2023, while the Moto G Play is sort of stuck in the past. It rocks the Moto design language from a couple of years ago, including the Motorola Dimple, which is its fingerprint sensor. All the other phones have the same basic form factor, and all five are all plastic all around. No metal, no premium build for any of them, and they are all water repellent, so let's call it splash proof, but with no official IP reading, I'd still be careful around water. As far as their various physical features, like I mentioned, the Moto G Play weirdly still has the old Moto design with a fingerprint sensor dimple or divot around back, while all the rest of the phones have the fingerprint power button combo on the side. They all have similar volume buttons though, and probably most importantly, they all support an SD card, which on a couple of these is absolutely necessary. So the Moto G Play has just 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. You're definitely going to need an SD card for that phone. The regular Moto G Stylus ships with 64 gigabytes, which again, still isn't a whole lot considering almost half of your storage is used up out of the box. The Moto G 5G gives you 128 gigabytes to work with, and the Moto G Power and G Stylus 5G have a respectable 256 gigs of storage. But either way, for like 10 or 15 bucks, you may as well stick in an SD card for some extra storage. A few final things to mention with their physical features, all five phones 
phones still retain a headphone jack. The Moto G Play has it at the top. The rest of the phones have it on the bottom. They all charge via a USB-C port. And obviously the Moto G styluses have their built-in styluses at the bottom as well. And let me just quickly mention that obviously the differentiating factor with the two Moto G styluses is their built-in stylus and the various apps that pair with that. You can use the stylus just to tap touch and swipe your way through the phone or utilize various Moto and non-Moto notes apps, drawing apps, shortcuts, and more. I have a ton of videos already reviewing these Moto G stylus phones and outlining their stylus features. They're basically the only stylus smartphones on the market now, besides the Samsung Ultra and Fold devices, which is cool, but it's still a very basic rudimentary writing and drawing experience that's far from the likes of the S Pen or like an Apple Pencil, for example. But like I said, it is the feature that sets these Moto G styluses apart from not just the rest of the Moto phones, but all the other smartphones of the world as well. So let's now dive into the specs. And actually, when it comes to the displays, this is pretty straightforward. All five of these phones have similar IPS LCD screens. You may notice some slight discrepancies in color, mainly the white balance. Some of these phones are a cooler blue shade. Others have a warmer yellow tint to them. You can make some minor color calibration adjustments in settings if you want to even them out, but they are essentially the same LCD panels that Moto devices have had for years. And they have the same glaring issue with glare and brightness that low-end LCD displays tend to have. The odd one out though is the Moto G Play on the far left. It needs to be set at like 60 or 70 percent brightness to be comparable to the rest of the phones which in this case are set at like 20 or 30 percent. So that phone in particular is really really dim. For the resolution the Moto G Power and the Moto G Stylus 5G are 1080p screens while the other three are 720p which honestly for screens this big it's kind of a bummer. 720p resolution means you get a measly 270 pixels per inch on these displays. And you can absolutely pick out those pixels when you look up close. They just aren't very sharp looking displays. The other differentiating factor, refresh rate. The Moto G Play and Moto G Stylus have the option to enable a 90 hertz refresh rate, while the Moto G, Moto G Power, and G Stylus 5G are 120 hertz capable displays. And that means those phones look and feel faster and more fluid with all your taps and swipes. To me, the Moto G Play certainly has the worst display of the bunch by far. It's super dim, low resolution, 90 hertz. The regular Moto G Stylus is also not great with a 720p resolution and 90 hertz. So if display quality and the overall viewing experience is most important to you, I'd simply just avoid those two phones entirely and opt for any one of the other three. Though the G Power and G Stylus 5G in particular are equally as good with the 1080p resolution and 120 hertz. Four out of the five phones also have dual speaker setups for a solid out loud listening experience. The Moto G Play has just the one speaker at the bottom, and I think you can certainly tell a difference. Here's a sample from the G Play and the Moto G so you can hear the one speaker versus two speaker setup. As far as the internal specs and performance and Android experience, these five phones are sort of divided into two tiers, and that's pretty obvious when we look at the Geekbench scores. So the Moto G Play and regular Moto G Stylus are a ways away from the other three, but the Moto G Play is really underpowered. Inside, it has the entry-level MediaTek Helio G37 processor from 2020 compared to just three gigabytes of RAM. Really not a whole lot to work with. The regular Moto G stylus is the next step up. It's got the MediaTek Helio G85 inside and four gigabytes of RAM, which altogether is still not great. The Moto G is really the first phone I would consider to be decent spec wise. It has the Snapdragon 480 plus 5G chipset and four gigabytes of RAM with much more respectable scores across the board. The Moto G power is pretty solid with the Media Tech Dimensity 930 and 6 gigabytes of RAM, which certainly makes a difference. And the top end phone here, the Moto G Stylus 5G, is powered by the very respectable Snapdragon 6 Gen 1 chip and 6 gigabytes of RAM. Plenty of power for most anyone. Now, once again, the Moto G Play is the odd one out with the software. It's still stuck in Android 12 
12 for some reason, while every other phone runs Android 13, though with varying security patches and update timelines. And obviously, it's kind of difficult to do a decisive speed test with five phones at once, but let me just say that I really don't think the Moto G Play in particular is a device that can hold up in 2023. It's severely underpowered. And even for some of the most basic tasks, it's slow and clunky and not even running the latest version of Android anyway. Even for a hundred bucks, I wouldn't bother with it. The regular Moto G stylus also isn't a phone that has enough power for what it's supposed to be, a big stylus smartphone. Motorola actually downgraded that phone across the board from the previous year. For what reason, I don't know. So unless you really want a stylus and don't wanna pay the extra money, don't bother with that phone either. The other three, I think, perform perfectly fine. They aren't flagship phones, they aren't going to be the first with new Android features, and they still suffer from Motorola's subpar software experience and tons of bloatware and pre-installed junk, but they are perfectly fine sub $300 phones performance-wise. When it comes to the battery and charging speeds, the Moto G Power used to be called that because it had the biggest battery of the bunch, but now for 2023, all five of these phones have the same sized 5,000 milliamp batteries inside, which is great. I think for a lot of people, any one of these Moto Gs could be day and a half or two day devices, and less time plugged in is key because charging speeds here are not very good. The Moto G Play supports just 10 watt wired charging. The Moto G, G Power, and regular G Stylus have 15 watt support, while the G Stylus 5G can charge at 20 watt speeds. But you're looking at multiple hours plugged into the wall for any one of these phones. And Motorola gives you just about the slowest wall plug anyway, if it's even included at all, some phones like the Moto G don't even give you the plug in the box. And these various phones don't have any other charging features, no wireless charging or anything else. Finally, with the camera setups, the hardware across the board is actually sort of similar, but the actual pictures these phones produce, well, they vary pretty heavily. So as with everything else, the Moto G Play, again, is the odd one out. Around back, its main camera lens is a 16 megapixel shooter paired to a two megapixel macro and two megapixel depth sensor, and a measly five megapixel selfie camera up front. The Moto G has a 48 megapixel main lens paired to a two megapixel macro and a slightly better eight megapixel selfie shooter. The rest of the phones all have 50 megapixel main lenses. The G Power has the two megapixel depth sensor and two megapixel macro though with a 16 megapixel selfie, while the regular G Stylus has the two megapixel macro secondary lens and an eight megapixel selfie camera. The Moto G Stylus 5G is the only one here with an ultra wide camera, which is awesome. And it also has the best selfie lens of the bunch, a 16 megapixel shooter. Essentially all the phones support up close pics with macro mode. Even the G Stylus 5G without its dedicated macro lens. They all have the same 8x digital zoom capabilities, and every one, aside from the Moto G Play, of course, has a similar set of shooting modes and features that I think any Motorola user would be familiar with. The G Stylus 5G is the only phone here that shoots 4K video, and taking a look at some selfie and rear lens camera samples here, I think you can tell that each one of these phones certainly captures a different shot. The color balance of each one is very very different. Some phones are saturated, others like the G-Stylus 5G are a bit dull. Speaking of the G-Stylus 5G on the far right there, it really smooths out my skin tone a lot, which is a little odd. Honestly, they all sort of capture the same level of detail, which is surprising. The rear cameras have a similar discrepancy with color and skin tone. The Moto G Power here looks particularly bad. I'm not sure why, but I look almost like a reddish pink color for some reason. The regular Moto G-Stylus actually might be the most accurate. I know this isn't a very scientific camera comparison, but hopefully this at least gives you a broad overview of what to expect. So all in all, here's the deal with these Moto G smartphones. The 2023 Moto G Play is a phone I'd simply avoid. It's outdated, underpowered, and yeah, I know it's only like a hundred bucks, but for 50 or a hundred dollars more, you can get a phone that's literally 10 times as good. The regular Moto G Stylus is also a phone I'd not bother with. It has poor specs, it's a worse phone than the previous year, and if you want a stylus, you can get the Moto G Stylus 5G for not much more money, and it's literally the best phone in this entire lineup. The other Moto G I'd seriously consider is the Moto G Power. I think it has the best balance of specs and price for like 200 bucks. But what do you guys think of these Moto G smartphones? Let me know in the comments down below. 
Love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though, or at least found it somewhat helpful. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.